Mercer, when you go to Merced, I, I said, when I'm in Fresno, and I call the sheriff, the city, the courts, the various places, I get hung up on sometimes. I said, every time I call, I call the sheriff, I call the courts, I call the county, I call the planning commission, everybody within one to two minutes act like they've known me all my life. Mm-hmm. They treat my questions as if my questions have merit and value. They respond as if they're concerned about getting me enough information. They walk process it is so much different than Fresno and he goes, Oh bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Okay, so he's now working there. He goes, Dad, you were right. I can't believe it. It is different. I said, Yeah, yeah, there are great people in Fresno too. I said, around the entire perimeters and through the through the tangential places you'll find it's got bad zones too. I said, you know, you'll find that there's a feeling as if they're ready. Huh? Without being trained, it's a natural feeling of being okay with you. You're okay to be around. He's, I know it's amazing. <laughs> so he likes that. Right. Well, since since you have also your son, also is wife or I'm sorry, I don't want to assume. No, I don't. No, she's not a wife. We've been together 34 years. Okay. Awesome. Um, she's but the, she's on the loan. She's on all the deed work and stuff. Gotcha. Yeah, I saw that name, but. Um, since we have those two included, is there a certain time or day that we can all talk at once? Because I think it would be a lot easier if everyone's going to be um, helping to make the decision or give input. Um, it would help to have everyone on the same page at once. I think so too. It's a great idea. And it's always been one of my ideas. Is, you know, get as many people who are all involved and wanting to go to the same. Uh, let's say go to a movie. Let's all get together. Let's agree which one. We don't have different cars going to different places all the time. Anyway, so yeah, I don't know what day yet. Uh, do I have a number that I can call you back? The reason why I have to call you back on that because uh, you do with this. Um, Marge is not here. She's mm-hmm. at the new job she got. She'll be there till seven something tonight. I'll have to talk to her about it. She hates phones. She hates people. Not that she really does. She just is very uncomfortable about doing what you and I are doing right now. She doesn't seem to want to be involved in that. No, nah, Marge, it's fun sometimes. You meet some good people. Come on. Anyway, you take a hanger in with a phone call or whatever or some other way to meet if you want to meet in person or whatever uh, with the COVID thing. Marge, we've lost two people in our family have died. COVID, not a fun thing to have happen. Oh, oh man. And, uh, other people we know, very close, to, uh, unbelievably, uh, not unbelievably, very traumatic experiences with it. I'm in my 70s. Everyone's worried about me catching it. I don't seem to be that worried, but that may be a fool's. <laughs> I may be embellished with my foolishness so much not to be worried as I should be. Nonetheless, I don't know if they'd want to meet together face to face, but that's a possibility. But as far as a phone conversation, something like that, where you have a speakerphone and everyone's talking or, or being quiet listening, that's possible, but I'd have to find out when that would be possible. DJ's not feeling good today. He has something going on. He has a tooth. Uh, they're going to do a root canal or whatever. And when that's taken care of, it would probably be better than beforehand since he's not very comfortable with what's going on at the moment. Sure. No, a- absolutely. I-, I think that would be the first great step. I mean, getting you know a phone conversation of all of us at, at once. Uh, and you- your son's name's correct? Yeah, we're calling That's actually for sure, because everyone has a bitter time with that. They call him everything. Oh, wait. Or did I say that right? Well, if you know how to spill in the. the oh. Fashion, it's like the. You know, and that kind of thing. Well, just take that in that's out front, drop it, throw it away, and in its place, put the letter and the letter. Got it, got it. Yeah, because I, I would love to speak to all of you at once. I think that's always the best route so that everyone can be on the same page. So, um,. You said that you would love to get back to me. This is my cell phone number that I'm calling from. I um, I've got it on my phone here. I don't see anything on here. Probably logged in somewhere, but if you want to give it to me, I could do that. Or if you have a better number. No, no, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you right now. Okay, let me reach over here like the paper, pen, and pencil thing still. Okie dokie. Oh, you probably told me your name, and I forgot we've been on the phone. My phone says over half an hour, so we didn't have a good time here. <laughs> 45 minutes talked about it's almost coming true <laughs> i told you that. <laughs> but um my name is justin yeah that's why i forgot it because my son's name is so justin just fit right in there i've been thinking about that went over tomorrow for a thanksgiving dinner so justin and is so much similar that i just you know i never have to worry about thinking about his name so that's why i dropped it out of my memory cells from him and the phone number justin <laughs> uh phone number is five five nine eight zero one three two one three Okay, I got 559-801-3213. Yes. 
Yes, and so I would, I would love for you to call back or if there's a good time for me to call back just to check in to see if there's been an update as far as a good date for everyone um, or a time. Um, but I, I would love to talk to all of you at once before we talk anything further because I, I want everyone to be comfortable. Okay, great. Now, what I'm going to do is tell people that you and I talk. Uh, I'll probably leave out a lot of things. I'm, I'm, I always do this. I went to a classroom. I went to physics class, chemistry classes. They seem so logical. Why never? You know, but the audio classes, they fail the test. They give me the book to read. And let me see something that's different. <laughs> okay? I'm not too bad if when I look at the pages and I watch things. But if I listen to a great lecture, even though it's an amazingly uh, wonderful lecturer, I'll just go right along with everything so much. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I forget everything the next day. So audio-wise, I might lose a bit of the fabric of what we talked about today. But basically, it's going to be my story that, hey, Justin thinks it's possible that there may be a way to actually consider the time frame that we're thinking about, which is a, 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 a bad marvel here seemingly. That may not be a bad marvel. We might both have a flexible way to handle time frames and have money available at the time something comes up, such an event, such of a property risk, such that we could actually make a valid offer based upon a way, the magic way, that uh, Justin thinks he can come up with. And that discussion to round it out with everybody on a phone call is kind of what you're uh, hoping could be accomplished. So that's a short story. And I say, well, I'll then give them all my fears, because I'm as fearful as could be about things. Yeah. And, uh, get them organized around the idea of saying, oh, okay, if you think it's worth talking to Justin again, I'll say, yes, I think it's worth talking to Justin again about it. Then I'll try to find a day, a time frame, a day, whatever. I'm going to call him mm -hmm. Working for Ellie, works out in the inverse area. He's gone five days. He comes home. He's tired. Normally, he would be available around a weekend point on the monthly calendar. So if weekends work with you, that would be okay. If not, then it's going to be tough because he's not around. Yeah, we weekends should be just fine for me. Okay. And uh, did my short story do okay, or do you want me to embellish it with more color and variety of adjectives? Okay? Uh, your story was actually perfect, and I just wanted to make sure that you get across that, you know, because of the problems that you've been having as far as him finding a home and watching it kind of pass by, like, there's a solution so that it doesn't have to keep happening to you guys. Okay. Well, we will, uh, like I said, when it comes down to reading and looking at paperwork and the descriptions over the phone are one thing, but uh, I will want to see something eventually so that I can review it, make notes and all those other kind of scary things that I do and call all my guys who I know who know things that I don't know and find out what's wrong with, I always try to find in software, I tell people, you know, I develop software, the reason it's worked so good out there. Uh, I had software that ran the largest company of its kind in the world one time as far as the land management thing. So the reason why it runs okay is I look at how it's going to fail. How does it fail? What can the humans do? What can I do wrong? How does it work wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Think, people think I'm so much. Why are you so negative? No. If you know everything that can go wrong, you just be a positive model of how you make the success. It's not going to go wrong. But if you don't know how it can go wrong, you've left something out. And when that day comes, which it will, then it crashes. You know, nothing I put out there has crashed that I know of. And uh, so I live in the, the negative side of the questions to produce the positive side of the results. And some people get confused about that. They think I live and dream and, and pray to uh, the God of negativity, which is not the case, okay? But uh, it sounds a lot like that. Right. Uh, when, you listen, when you listen to me. So I would want to look at things and find out what's going on. Eventually, I'll have to look at things presentations as opposed to hearing the stories. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, that, that'll, be, that'll be no problem. But I, I think the most important thing is making sure that everyone gets a conversation at the same time. But, you know, given the questions and answers we've, we've talked about today so far, do you at least under, feel like I understand what's going on in your world? Good. And I have a good feeling. I mean, I like the way you've come up with uh, wanting to carry things on further. You're not, uh, most, at this time, most people have given up on me. I mean, really, most people have given up on me. And um, I like that you're not, uh, they're not shaped by my style, and I, I can actually be etiquettely correct sometimes, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I try not to be that way too much. I, I like my, I, some song, I write some music too as well. One of the songs about my granddaughter, I want you to literally, I want people to not be afraid to be, uh, if they can be nonviolent, not be afraid of falling down, making fools of themselves, and learn to laugh at themselves and have fun 
and join in with uh, the learning curves of things in ways because life is better when you don't try to be straight jacketed by too much propriety that uh, just tears the hell out of your, your soul from us and gets you uh, boxed up in containers as opposed to out there living a little bit wilder. It's good to know the difference, okay? It's good to know when to pull yourself out of the, the bad spots and so forth, but don't be afraid to get a little dirty in life. Right. And just before you, you go and have a conversation with I want to ask you this one question because I, I want to make sure you actually, you know, trust me. Like, do you believe that I can actually help you? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have considered the opinion that you have the great potential to help me. I don't, I don't believe in things like other people, but I have a considered opinion that you can be very skillful and helpful about uh, getting this piece of the puzzle of all the universe into its place where it does better in its next stage of I'll growth. take that. Okay, I, I think I can take that, because I, I, I just wanted to make sure before you talk to them that you actually, you have faith. So, because if you didn't have faith, then yeah, I wouldn't I believe that they would. I feel, but you know, not everything that flies has the same kind of wing as the other one. So if faith were a wing, you might, don't, don't say the other guy doesn't have faith just because their wings look different, okay? If we're talking as, as the flight thing, some, sometimes it's a different form and it, it doesn't necessarily even fly. Sometimes it has to crawl on its belly sometimes, but it gets to that other place that without that kind of faithfulness, it wouldn't have got there. It sure. would have been stagnant, stone, rock, cause, immobile. And sometimes those other versions, okay, they aren't easy to accommodate, but they are also okay to just allow them to be a part of your observations of the truth. That makes sense. That makes sense because you have an opinion that I I can help. So that I'll, I'm comfortable with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have an opinion. You can be a helpful person, and I, I like the sound. I like the feel. So if you're a con man out there, that's good. I mean, that's that's okay, but yeah, that's too bad for you if you are. But I, but you're doing good at this point with it. <laughs> I, you know, walked around the corner one day. Uh, a friend of mine were talking, and I walked on the corner. I turned to my right, and there was a switchblade knife just a few inches from my throat. You know, that could have been a, a bad situation. But the confidence in the humanity of it all was uh, just let him ask his question. Don't fight the idea that you're stuck at the knife of your throat. Don't worry about that. Look at the eyes and let him say his thing. He did his thing. We responded with uh, not the best answer, but it was an okay. No one got hurt. Everybody had a good time. We, my friend and I continued walking and talking after that. Now, you may not be a guy with a switchblade knife called real estate or investment company or whatever. It might be. But uh, we'll have a talk, we'll see what happens with goes, and if we can keep walking and talking after the fact of whatever, that'll be great. So I feel like the potential, though, rather than a knife, is a, a hand. A handshake that can hold on to the other person's considerations as well as its own. That's you, you're holding on to my considerations as well as what you have to work with there, too. And I have this feeling that the potential is a, a good experience. It's a uh, continued improvement of the journey, possibly. And that would be a hopeful thing on my side. And I haven't been too bad, I don't think, with uh, your day. I know that we've gotten close to that. I've got 42 minutes of my uh, little clock thing here. So I think it's been a real uh, fun time to have had the call from you. I hope you haven't been too disappointed with talking to me. I will find out from and from what type of uh, timing uh, would be okay with them to get together. And I will call you back to the number I've got down over there on my uh, auto loan. I've got a trap, but the auto loan never goes away. It's always in my face. <laughs> no Perfect. So, and uh, we'll get back to you and let you know when I come up with the responses from the other two and explain things, work things out, and get to the way that you might have, if not an exact architecture at the moment, uh, a way that you feel comfortable uh, becoming the architectural framework that we'll look at as a way to proceed. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, how will you get back to me? Because this is my cell phone. Do you plan to text or call or? No, my phone might indicate it looks like a cell phone. It's not. It's oh. Not. This is an AT&T set up here. When they set it up somehow or the other, even though it was never discussed as being, I want a landline. Because in the law office I worked at, we had uh, computers and text phones. And when you're on court and you're in court and you're over the phone, the judge does not like it and is not very appreciative when your line goes dead. And that happened. So the computerized things, the node things, and the Wi-Fi and all, whatever they had there. And I warned David that, Dave, these things go down. Why do I know? I'm in computers. I used to use an oscilloscope. I used to work on these things. These things have their little behaviors. Landlines are our street. Well, we got rid of that because, in fact, that happened. The judge wasn't happy. 
So this phone, though, AT&T, somehow or the other, has a, has a uh, mobile. <laughs> it comes up as a mobile. It's not. It's a landline. It doesn't receive texts at all. It's got no goodies. It just calls and receives. It's all good. Sure. So, so you plan to call instead? I plan to call, yeah. Okay. Perfect. No, that's perfectly fine. You can call me anytime. Um, and I'll be looking forward to hearing from you. Yeah, uh, if something doesn't come up, if DJ's situation takes too long, I'll even call you to let you know that he's still in the process of, he's a more difficult scheduling person sure. than Margarita. He's gone so much, and uh, he's, the company's found out that he can do things in ways that they really like, so they've given him more things to do. And other companies, pg and &E, have seen his work, and other companies around him, they want him to join their group and so forth like that. So he sometimes does other kind of things rather than coming right home, <laughs> that kind of stuff. But in general, weekends, though, are, generally speaking, a, a good uh, place on a calendar to uh, expect the likelihood of the ability to have a phone call meeting. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time, and I'm, I'll be looking forward to talking to you all. I can just imagine how you can go, <laughs> so darts on my picture, and <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, it's been nice talk with you, Justin. I will get back to you. If it's a, uh, uh, an ambiguous, nobody can come up with an idea of a date yet or whatever, one way or the other, I'll get back to you in about a week, I'd back to or less, it all depends. Awesome. Well, happy holidays as well. Same to you, Justin. I hope things work out real well if you have any family, friends, or whatever. And just uh, uh, join them with the goodness of it. Awesome. Well, talk soon then. Alrighty, bye-bye now. Bye-bye. That conversation went extremely well. So I have a couple notes for you who are, I know you're trying to learn. First off, that conversation was 45 minutes long and I told him at the beginning it was probably gonna take 45 minutes and he's like, no, I don't, I don't have 45 minutes. But by how he was talking, it seemed like he could talk. And I was like, he's gonna keep talking. It's gonna go 45 minutes. And it went exactly 45 minutes. So it was a great conversation. I wanted to end that call with him in the sense of I wanted to bring out his emotion. So you may have noticed that I asked him the question of, do you feel like I understand your world? And he pretty much opened up. He's like, yeah, like you understand really well. Like I'm happy you understood. I, other investors didn't understand and they kind of gave up on me. Because the reason I did that is that no person makes a decision based on logic. Every single person makes a decision based on emotion and they justify it with logic. So I wanted to tap into his emotions to make sure that he likes me and really knows that I understand him. And then I also asked him the question of, do you believe I can help you? Now, he kind of skirted a little bit because he's he's a different kind of guy. And like, yeah, I have considered a brilliant that you have the great potential. I mean, I don't, I don't believe in things like other people, but I have a considered opinion that you can be very skillful and helpful. And I was like, Sounds like he believes me. So I asked that question because I wanted him to really feel that he believed in me and that I could help him. Because if he didn't believe it when he talked to his partner and his son about me, I wanted him to know and understand that he liked me and I wanted them to feel it. So that's kind of why I asked that question. The second main thing that I wanted to bring up is that I brought up the other decision makers. I didn't say decision makers, I said input. Who has input on the sale of your home? And that's why he brought up his partner I did not want to continue the conversation any further about price or anything like that until I understood and I could talk to all of them at once because the worst possible thing you could do is give this guy an offer. He likes the offer, but then he talks to his wife and his son and keep in mind the seller probably was not trained in sales. So he doesn't know how to communicate clearly and give ideas and stuff like that. So when he presents that idea to his partner and his son, they're not convinced. And that would have been the worst thing and it's very common whenever you have a situation where there's multiple decision makers, you want to and you should talk to all of them. That's the most ideal situation. Otherwise, you risk the chance of losing the deal. Because especially if I were to give an offer, once I say my offer, my price, that offer is commoditized. Like he could go to other investors and say, hey, this guy offered me 100, like what do you got? And that would have been bad too. But Already from the conversation that he had with my lead manager, Kedmar, I figured out that he was really willing to let this go for pretty much his mortgage. And I think he has like $119,000 for his mortgage. So that's what I want you to take away. I'm gonna record when I have another conversation with him because I do believe that this is a deal. The main pain of his is that he wants to live with his son and he wants to help his son get a home, but his son has been off or finding homes that he likes to buy. And then he was planning to use the down payment to help his son purchase, but he doesn't have the down payment 
until he sells his home. But if he sells his home early, he's gonna be like left out and he doesn't have anywhere to go. He doesn't wanna stay at a hotel or anything like that or an Airbnb. So I offered the solution to be more flexible. I said, look, what if there's a solution, and there is, I said, what if there's a solution to where we can come to an agreement and have a more flexible timeline. Maybe you'll say we'll have a 60 day escrow, but if that doesn't work, we can easily adjust it and you can come to me right when your son finds at home and we can start our process to actually buy your home so that you have the funds ready to purchase the next home. So that was my pitch to him and he seemed to like it. So I'll keep you updated again on how it goes, but that was a great conversation and I want you to learn from that. I used a lot of Steve Trang sales techniques in there and it works like a charm. That was actually the first real long conversation I've had trying to use his techniques and it went very well. Also, if you want to grow your real estate business, whether you're brand new or if you already have deals under your belt, DM me the word coach on Instagram at Justin, you're wrong. I'll see you at the next one.